Hello guys. So today I decided to redeem myself and actually upload something. So I thought I'd reflect my pain and misery by telling you guys that this UC took 11 hours to finish. So we were all up until midnight to finish this one tournament. So really, great job to everyone who stuck it out and to the staff for helping out. I think we all really pulled through. So let's just hop straight into it. We've got five games to look at today. I am going to get rid of this. All right, so we've got one of five matches that we're going to watch. This is going to start around the beginning of the bracket, and at this time, the staff was super busy. We were super behind on matches. Uh, results would take about like two to three minutes just to report. So yeah, it was pretty crazy at this time, but I really hope that the casters were having a good time. So for the purpose of the video, I'm going to just simply mute them for now. You can't hear them in the video just because... You know, it's much, e much easier for me to talk about what I'm thinking of. And so right away, you can notice two things. So so this is Tokoyami versus Gladon. I have never heard of these people, so this was actually really exhilarating to watch. And I'm going to say that for a few of them, but do keep in mind that this tourney was super slow just because we didn't have any pass-through on. And this was the first time that we've ever done it, so... That was pretty much the reason why uh, we couldn't, you know, have it go faster. So what I what I found interesting is that both these players opened up with for, uh, PCO and a four wide respectively. So you don't usually see four wides happening in this kind of level of gameplay. Maybe for some people, but yeah, you don't usually see this happen. Maybe around U rank or some t some place like that. I don't see it. For PCO, obviously, I do see that happening. And in fact, there was a Miss PC at the very start. So if we go scroll right here. So this is... I think if you just looked at, look at this for a small second, I'm going to try to write this in Fortress. But yeah, this should be a pretty easy solve. And all you got to do is just, is just know that you can skim with the TPs first. So if I copy this onto my fortress board, you can see that kind of fits together. But unfortunately, that we, we didn't see that in game, so on with it. And as you'll kind of notice, Tokiyami now has to send clean to make sure that this 4 wide doesn't get any more dangerous than it already is. But, you know, after that, it's messed up, so... Now they just have to play the game, which is, again, kind of weird because they decided to commit to this. And honest, honestly, I was ex I was expecting something much bigger, but, you know, there's going to be more rounds coming up. So I, I'm still excited to see what happens next. Now, I will say that uh, I can I'm probably going to speed up some of the matches from here on out just because some of them might be a bit slower than usual. And you can already see that Tokiyami has already messed up a few times. So if we go here and then scroll a bit farther back, you can see that from the start, this garbage hole has been here the whole time. And at, at this point, what Tokoyama needs to do is to start cheesing far enough just to get to that one hole so that any garbage that comes over won't uh, hinder them. But then you can see this eyepiece right here that they placed which is also right over the hole. So if you count that, that's about eight lines that they need to clear before they can reach that well. So that is really bad, and which is why I would be mindful of my hole. And this miss drop definitely killed it just because there's really no other better place to put your pieces after that. So after that, uh, that was just a warm up round, by the way. All right. So you kind of get a taste of what these players are about. And so we move on to the real match. And I probably will be showing the warm-up for some of these players. Probably just a few. So, uh, yeah, you can tell that I'm pretty infuriated right now just because both these players are doing stick spin. But I'll be honest, if it's stick spin versus stick spin, I'm not going to be too mad just because, um, you know, if you fight fire with fire, then what's the point of complaining? And so these perfectly cancel with each other. So there's no board... There's no garbage being thrown around. Not bored. Sorry. <laughs> so, unfortunately, they have to play the game normally. Oh no, so sad. That, that was sarcasm.
but yeah, if you if you do want to be become a good uh, S plus player, I would really recommend you practice your mid game. Just like I say to anyone else that is looking to improve at the beginner level or intermediate, even try not to focus too much on openers. Even like even if you see see like six men, you think that's a really good opener for you. Even if you do rank up, it's still not going to help you improve exactly, unless of course you're at a place where people can still counter stick spin relatively uh, consistently. So here, uh, Tokoyami is kind of just taking their time to get to the bottom of that well, and I think this is going to be like from like from what I'm seeing right now, this probably is going to bite them back, just because. If you're not interacting with your garbage as much at this point in time, then, you know, people who can deal high APM will probably, will probably, uh, do way better against you. I'm, I'm starting to, like, lose the words in my head. But, you know, don't worry, I can find them. And, you know, there are, uh, for Tokoyami, there are also a lot of compromising, uh, board positions. That you'll see that they're kind of have to think out of the box to get out of the, some of those. And although that does ha happen a lot of times in X rank, it usually doesn't happen here around S plus, which does kind of make me concerned because Tokoyami can find themselves in some weird situations. Now, as for Gladon, I haven't seen that yet, but I'm assuming they might be a consistent player. And as you can see, we got we got six fin from both players. And Tokoyami actually messes this one up, so it is basically a death sentence. And I, I, and I think at this time the commentators were just losing it right now. Yeah, I was here at this time. I was actually listening to this in the background. I was wondering what they were talking about. And then I see Stixman on the screen, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But, yeah... So yeah, during this whole time, I wasn't really watching. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure some of this goes fast forward. And also, we do see a small blunder, I guess, in starting this opener PCO, is that if you're building this shape vertically, the J, O, and L, I mean horizontally, if you're building it horizontally, then you also need to have this eyepiece up here. If you don't have this eyepiece, then you're basically screwed, and no one can help you. Uh, please ignore that. If the pop-up showed up for you. But yeah, we have a really nice Dixman from Gladon. And by by really nice, I of course mean horrendous. Like seriously, I really don't want you guys to use Dixman. But, you know, if there's attorney attorney setting, then of course people are going to use Dixman. If they want to win, then they're going to win. <laughs> But, you know, in a, in a surprising t uh, turn of events, uh, Gladon manages to find himself at the top of the board, and I think this was simply because there was too much upstacking on his side. So let's go a little farther back. Because, yeah, we were somewhere around here, and then if we, you know, just fast forward over time, that eventually just came, became too much to deal with. So I will keep this sped up. And I think as you can... See right here. I think Gladon was trying to go for stick spin and then accidentally misheld. So now Tokiyami is on the offensive with stick spin, and then again they both mess up. So Tokiyami, Tokiyami, sorry, has basically messed up stick spin almost every time, and that once again makes me kind of concerned. Just because, you know, even if you play consistently, playing fast is almost is sometimes not the answer. Because. Uh, as you know, as a person who goes, I think goes pretty fast in the opener. Uh, I can get really inconsistent sometimes, and that can just lead to my death. So, usually at the start, I like to play consistent. You know, just get the right amount of PPS where you can control it, and you're not going to make any miss drops, or at least you know that. And yeah, also during this tourney. If you probably noticed that a lot of players are playing super defensive, they're going to stay at the bottom of their board as long as possible when they can, and make sure that no, no spikes are coming towards them. 
But of course, there are better stacking decisions that can be made between all these S, S plus players and in between. And so what both players need to do in this situation for, well, what all players need to do in this in these kinds of situations where they're kind of at a stalemate or don't really have an advantage over the other player is start creating an attack and take a risk. And while that does sound like, you know, just something you can, like an x rank could just like do in an instant, but an S plus player kind of has to figure it out on their own. You know, you got to make a plan first. You got to think about uh, if, if you want to send a Tetris or anything like that. Like, even just sending a Tetris, that's, like, one of the most basic plans you could ever come up with. And that's already effective enough. So if you're just, like, completely lost on ideas, you can just simply stack stack up to send a Tetris, and that'll work. Of course, unless you're in immediate danger. And as you can see, uh, Tokoyami is trying to find a convenient place to put their pieces and finds this S-spin. Now, unfortunately, with the S-spin... There does come, wait, if you do this that's been right here, you have to place a lot of pieces, which is why instead of placing this uh, T piece right here, what I would have done, actually, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use Fortress again, because a Fortress is a godsend, and I, and I say that, and I say that unironically. All right, so if you can ignore the perfect layer sign right here, instead of putting this T piece right here, what we can do is take this J piece, and slide it in here. Now, of course, this isn't as fancy, I guess, but it does leave you more open to, you know, down stacking more. And of course, it for some reason just didn't register the bottom of the board, but you know, it's fine as long as I get the message across. And actually, here, I think this is a down stack that a lot of low rank players miss. Which is simply using the eye piece before any other piece. And by that I mean horizontally. So if I go back. So as you can see, if I... Oh god. Alright, let's 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 fix that. Okay, so if I have this board right here and I skim with an L piece, it's going to take a little bit longer for me to finish my down stack. So instead, if I put this eyepiece horizontally, then that small gap is gone. That was a much better down stack. And the reason for that is just because, as you can see, when I put this L piece here, there's two gaps in between. And when I clear that line, there's no more gaps. I think it's just as simple as that. So if you're ever a U-rank and that wants to improve on down stacking, that is one thing you can look out for, because I know a lot of beginners will miss that. Even intermediate players, Sometimes X ranks will even miss it. But yeah, that is some, something that's pretty hard to spot sometimes. And you know, sometimes the, the cleanest looking placements aren't always the best. And sometimes X ranks will, well, even U ranks, a lot of high level players will realize that and obviously make some placements that don't look good, but do benefit them in the future. And as you can see, Gladon is once again at the top, but has a small down stack coming up. And like I said said before, I think, you don't have to down stack fast. I think I said this to one of my uh, one of the people that I coached. I coached about five people before this tourney started. And uh, I think a few of them were already participants in the tourney. So I was glad to see some people, you know, benefiting from my coaching. Or at least I hope it could have just been that they were already good at the game. But, you know, I like, I like to be optimistic. Sometimes. I, I, think, I think people um, probably mistake me for being pessimistic. Which is entirely true. But I don't, I don't know why I said that, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm way more pessimistic than op optimistic. But, you know, I'm, I'm not really one to determine that. Okay, so... What Gladon used to do right now, of course, getting that down stack as fast as possible, but also making sure that they have a ready attack just in case they get spiked. Now, as you can see, that's not that's clearly not happening. But in higher levels, you will get have to have to do with getting spiked while down stacking, and preparing a quad 
quad, a T-spin, any of those things can ba can basically hold you out for another second or two. And as you can see, this is a really long survival. So if I speed this up, we're, you can see that we're almost into the into the five minute mark. And this is how most of the games are going to go. And if you can't, if you just find someone that's not dying. Sending cheese is usually not the answer because they are probably going to either find a good spike or just send you cheese back. So what you want to do when someone's about to die is send clean, preferably something that'll be enough to top them out, unless, of course, that just gives them more ammo. But in most cases, you do want to send clean. And already, Tokoyami puts Gladon in a pretty high, high spot. The last thing you want to do at a high spot is to misdrop. Which is why, once again, you gotta downstack slow. Because if you make if you make a misdrop while downstacking, that's gonna be fatal. And as you can see, there are a couple of misdrops in between. But yeah, pretty much. And I, I feel really bad for these players too. Just because um they wanted they wanted to base basically win as many matches as possible with stick spin, and they just usually messed up most of the time. It's, I mean, I shouldn't feel bad for them because I'm part of the anti stick spin society, but I don't know. Maybe it's just pity that these foolish mortals even wanted to learn stick spin in the first place. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not. I'm not choking up. Anyways, so if we look at Tobiyami's board, this is a huge well, and this is a mistake that I see every beginner make when they have huge wells like this, and then they just cancel and cancel and cancel and cancel. Like you have like you have like a potential twenty spike coming up, and you're just skimming. No, or at least that's what I'd like to say to. <laughs> To someone that I was coaching, but I'm not coaching anyone right now, except I guess the viewer not in real time. Sorry, what was I saying? <laughs> saying, yeah, when you have a huge well, you want to use it as much as possible, which means sending as much uh, garbage output as possible. That usually just means even if you have that huge well, you got to keep stacking up higher and higher. And do make sure that you don't get like PC'd in between. You don't have a piece ready to, to cancel that out. So you want to do safe stacking, but you also want to be risky enough to send enough garbage. And the problem with, of course, like getting that much, that much free clean garbage, as you can see on Tokoyami's side, if you get that free garbage, and you really don't use it for anything, or you're just waiting for a single burst of garbage then that's that's still not going to do that much and that's what i really like about this part right here because instead of just going for one tetris and then continuing to stack he keep, keeps placing until the second tetris comes in so yeah props to you for that unless unless you're a she or a they in that case i really apologize And also, it's really easy to recover from mistakes like these in the opener when you do something like miss PCO. And by the way, for PCO, make sure that you don't have the SP stuck here on the wall. You want to have it one piece out, because the T piece is also also supposed to be on the ground. But yeah, that is a pretty quick fix, and I really like it, just because it doesn't complicate the board, and you know exactly what you're going to do next. And Gladon just immediately sends all that garbage back, even if it doesn't kill it's still just enough to get it off their chest. And maybe with a little more more quick thinking, some of these players could usually get out of the predicaments that they're in. Like, trust me, X-Ranks can survive from the depths of hell and beyond. Like, it doesn't really depend much on the garbage. It just depends if they can get out spiked. But of course there are, but of course there are, 
I think a lot of X rank deaths are caused just by being at the top of the board and getting out spiked. And that is because most of the time they can get out of certain uh, tough spots, I guess. And I will speed up the footage once again. And we're not yet at match point yet. And it's been about 15 minutes and we're feeling tired. And just for reference, uh, most X rank matches with uh, pass through on can take about 10 to 20 seconds per round. And once again, they don't see the TP skim and then L and JPC, which is something I'd probably recommend learning. But even then, you also have this garbage that won't work out for you. So unfortunate. And it's always good to look for T spin setups. As you can see, you go back here. All right, and I'm going to fortress this. So while you, my dear viewer, are watching and waiting for me to finish this up, all right, wait, let me get this straight. All right. Once again, really good to look for T-spin setups. Once you've gotten this, you can go for a T-spin. And then you kind of have a BT cannon coming up. Now, of course, this isn't this this isn't the cleanest, but I like it, so therefore it's good. And both players continue to, of course, wait it out. My, I guess, my favorite pastime of the day. And Tiro Tokoyami actually kind of missed a spike. If I go back, if it'll let me go back. All right. So we have right here. So if you want to take a moment to pause and figure it out yourself, I'll give that to you. But you know, for now, I uh, come on. Okay, this. Okay, Fortress is actually is actually being mean to me. Okay, I got it set up. So if you can't see right here, we can start with the uh, one combo, two, three, and then a Tetris. Now once again, it isn't the cleanest out there, but it does get a pretty good combo just to send a little bit of garbage to the other player. So what do you do in this kind of predicament where you where your opponent has garbage, but you don't have any resources. Well, well, of course, instead of just sending a Tetris, you can also send T-spins. And as, as you can see, that's clearly not what's not going on right now. And Gladon is missing a few of the crucial setups that can be used to prevent stuff like this from happening. So I believe the intent was to spin the L piece so it fits in this specific hole. Well, it could also fit in this specific hole. And if you did want to fit it in this specific hole, then what you can do is put an O piece right here, and then it'll let you kick it into this specific hole. So yeah, there are a lot of rules to SRS, of course. But once you get to know the system for SRS, like try out some, a few of the spins for yourself, then you'll understand what works and doesn't work. So you can, you can make better decisions on what to be spinning and what not to be. In fact, I actually missed a pretty good spin in one of my, uh, in a tourney that I participated in. I actually won that tourney. But I did miss a J spin that I didn't know about in the game, that I didn't even know was, that was in the game. But when I found out, I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. But yeah, like I said, SRS is crazy. And Gladon, I, I don't know why Gladon was building right on top of the well, but it really scared me and I don't know, I don't I don't feel safe anymore. And another another really important thing when you're down stacking and watch Gladon again. The next intent is to put this S piece right here in the middle. Now, when we look at downstack, we also have to analyze 
the pros and cons of what what's being done. So of course the S piece is being is skimming to, down to the next part of the hole, and that is good. But the old, the other problem is, for the next line to be cleared, you have these two separate holes. So what would have actually been better is we put the T piece here instead, and then put the S piece, and then we have. I think this is actually a spike. I'm gonna. Okay, so apparently Fortress just just did this thing where it inverted all of the colors. So yeah, thank you for that, Fortress. So I will, I will I'm gonna try and just get this over with. Okay. I got the design. Oh my god. Uh, did I tell you guys that Fortress is really hard to work with? On demand at least. So you can see right here, there's not much to do. And then putting the TPs in here. That allows us to get a quad in between our four combo. So that would have been a huge spike. I would have loved to see it. But you know, this is also fine too. Whenever I see something huge happening, it's usually whenever someone's about to top out. So it doesn't actually matter. And once again, if Gladon thought a little bit longer about where to place this, putting it just one, putting the Z piece just one piece to the right would have also been fine. Here, of course, you're covering your well. But as a last minute decision, this is perfectly respectable. So now it's actually tiebreaker. And Gladon needs one more point to win, and I believe this is the winner's bracket still. So there weren't many games up there yet in stream matches. And you can see Gladon's going into going into a straight six uh, six three stack. And I don't know, I don't know why, uh, for some reason, why S plus players completely abandoned the idea of six three stacking. This actually happened in uh, Toss sixteen, but six, not, not specifically six three stacking. Sorry, but just regular stacking in general. They can go a long way, especially for intermediate levels, just because you've already mastered stacking. So why not improve improve on that by getting better at it, or just straight up doing doing that in verses. Because as you can see, this is around 60 APM. Just stacking up and sending a Tetris. This is uh, what I rec recommended for some beginners to try out. And it works really well in this situation because Tokoyami here is almost at the top of their board. Of course, with a little clean garbage they can get out. But you can see how effective this is. And now I believe that Gladon actually missed a better up stack here. So instead of putting this J piece in the middle, what he could have done is put this L piece right here in the middle, or J piece, of course, because you have this JL dependency. So you might as well solve that first rather than continuing to stack. So if he continued this specific stack, I think that wouldn't have been a heartbreaking loss to go into tiebreaker. Did I say tiebreaker last time? I think this, no, that was, this is match point. But yeah, it's just a very slow up stack to the top of the board. And there's base there's almost no escape out of it. Well, of course there was an escape, but then the eyepiece misdrop. You always need to make sure that your eyepieces don't completely bail on you just because they can be really finicky, especially at the top of the board. In fact, if you are at the top of the board and your eyepiece just isn't going in, I would recommend just trying to I guess try and uh, force it in a few times. And so since it is tiebreaker, these two want to win. So they're both going to do stick spin, of course. And Tokoyami messes this up. So now we're all just waiting on, on Gladon. But Gladon also messes it up. So unfortunate, they have to play the game for real if they want to win. I mean, is that really a shocker? Honestly, at this point, I, I feel like... We should do. We should. We have to 
do something about getting people to stop using six pin in tournaments just because like this is the photographic evidence that people shouldn't be using six pin in tournaments just because it's been it's, it's, they failed it like 50 times but yeah you'll see that just like their their general strategy to stay alive during these times especially in tiebreaker if it is tiebreaker then of course prepare to to get extremely sweaty you gotta play as defensive as possible and wait for a spike to come to you. And sometimes sending clean, it can be problematic just because, of course, they can send that to you as a clean spike. And of course, and when the goal is to be defensive, spikes can definitely be a problem because you don't know how much that they'll actually deal without, of course, experiencing it. But yeah, what most of these uh, tiebreakers that we see like on stream matches, the, these have been taking like minutes, and it really was not a good idea for Tokoyami to wait around there. When you're at this point in the game, you gotta make sure that you're still making placements while also, you know, not making miss drops. And I think I was watching it. I, I think I already uh, watched at this point. This really hurt me. When you're at tiebreaker and you make a bunch of missed drops. Like, dude, I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about that. So we're going to move on to our second game. And this is da uh, Daniel 35489 versus uh, Reku. And I believe Daniel was the winner of this, U this UC. Uh, that is correct. So spoilers, Daniel won the UC. But you already saw that at the beginning because I literally gave you the placements for all three players. And also, uh, just a small tip for these, for when you get placements like these. Uh, for SRS, if you soft drop this LPs all the way down, it's not going to fit in there. So, what you, have, you can do is one, like maybe one of two things. You can either just soft drop it where it is right now, and then slowly wait for it to come down at least like one piece, and then do the rotation. Or you can drop it all the way down to the hole, and then 180. 180 twice, sorry. In fact, I don't actually. I don't think you, I don't think you can 180. So I take that back. So yeah, you'd have to soft drop, then wait for one cycle, and then rotate it in. Sorry, yeah. What am I saying? I'm a terrible coach. And already, I was. I'm really liking the change of pace for the the UC contenders just because they're I say just because a lot, sorry. Because their playstyle is much faster, more direct, I guess, for lack of a better word. And I really don't blame them for UC being extended this long because we've because by the time it was around like six, seven, eight hours we weren't even finished with the losers bracket, the winners bracket actually. I believe the winners bracket was stuck around like the quarters finals for a while. But yeah, I, I still have nightmares about uh, being us being like five minutes behind in the in the uh, matchups. And I think, and I think here was a really smart move from Reku. If you look on the right side, so here what I would have done as a dumb, stupid, dumb bitch ass X rank is what I would I would have tried to put the Z piece in here and then try to go for a TST. Oh, and while that is flashy, it's really bad. So which I, what I really like is that Reku tries to simplify the board just by doing the Z spin, and you will see a lot of. This kind of spinning from intermediate level players and surprisingly they are very useful but yeah I, I used to always think like with the S and Z spin the ones that are pretty finicky to beginners until they learn how to do it I'm always thinking well I'm never I'm not I'm never gonna use this so like what's the point until you know like two years later and Z spins basically saved me every match 
And already Daniel is starting off with a dependency. And for a dependency, you just have to build around them if you're stacking normally or just skim. And also 6-3 stacking, a very big bonus just because you can do T-spins as well, which can increase your APM. So yeah, continuing this specific pattern allows them to send a lot more APM. And if you look at their APM count, while it does say 43, honestly, honestly just, just the pressure that was coming on, that was coming forward, and maybe with a bit more speed it would be much more than that. But yeah, this could easily rise up to, to much higher APM just just by like gaining back to back. Another another thing I was really stressing about in this tourney was back to back. Just because a lot of um high um high level players use back to back to their full advantage. And then a lot of intermediate players just take it for granted. So you know, maybe we should make a national holiday like just fucking back to back awareness day. And then like that day of the like that day of the year, just learn about doing back to backs. So going on with this, I'm so sorry, I went off on a tangent. Uh, yeah, it's it was actually very satisfying for me to watch some of these players play with ju just cheese. Uh, because because I don't know I don't know why like the second that they touch the bottom of the board, I don't know it just is super satisfying. And if you'll notice that Daniel. Okay, don't notice that. I literally just saw that mist drop and I was like, what's going on? Now, if you don't actually know, this is a two wide puzzle if you guys want to look at this. All right. Yeah, so what you can do with a TST if you have it pretty wide open, if you can make a TSD right here, you can follow it up with another TST because you kind of have that same overhang. If you know what I mean. But yeah. With an S piece, you can basically make a T-spin double and then have that same overhang just with an, with an extra piece on the right side. And of course, I, I being the impatient fuck that I am, I'm going to speed this up. And already, I'm shocked. Because look at this. This all clear... That's such clean garbage, I wouldn't even send my Tetris here. So, probably first thing I prioritize is making this making this T-spin a thing. I probably put the put a T piece here, J piece, Z piece, and then I'm all set for life. But I think the most important thing was to set up first. And the fact that Daniel just does not send anything in this specific time that Mecca was able to get an SDSD. It really pained me that this that this was the luckiest garbage ever and they still lost. So if we go on with the magic horse, there it some of these players will actually do too wide. And I think a lot of players also like just at this rank will try to find strategies or normalized setups to try and top out their opponent, which is going to happen a lot in the opening. And I think a simple counter to that is just to play consistently. And as crazy as that, as that sounds, I find that a lot of people that lose to stick spin often miss drop like in the first five seconds because they, they're kind of scared of stick spin. And the reality is all you have to do is just play consistent. And that's already one strong factor into you not dying straight up in the opening. Because uh, openers like Stickspin kind of prey on the fact that you will mess up. And you somehow lose your balance. And then you top out. Now of course you can still top out even if you're playing consistently to like Stickspin. Because it, it catches you off guard. And there are... And the... 
the number one strategy, of course, is to just cancel that garbage when it comes to you. But if you find yourself consistently misdropping, then you just gotta play slower, you gotta, you know, just learn to take a deep breath, make sure that you're placing every piece correctly, or at least where it needs to go. Because, you know, I think it's more important to win the match than to go as fast as possible. And like I said, you need you don't need to go as fast as possible because record right here was going was going pretty fast just to try and get that PCO and then immediately fails. So now you had nothing. So the risk reward situation is pretty painfully obvious. Like once again right here, this misdrop is pretty fatal. Um of course like without the fact that the other opponent also misdropped. But like guys, you really gotta stop making these mistakes. Because if your opponent messes up, you like that, right? But then if if you mess up, then your opponent really wants that. So yeah, most of the time you do want to take risks. But if you're trying to go super fast, something that's like out of your comfort level, then you really gotta stop. Because you will end up like some of these people here that have tried to do openers as fast as possible and then misdropped at some point. And that was a really uh, clean, um, what should I say? What's the word for it? See, uh, I have this disease known as being too stupid to understand what it is, so. Right here, this Tetris, it perfectly clears, uh, clears out four lines and it opens up the next well. So at this point, I would start trying to build my back-to-back. -back. So whenever you get a string of quads or T-spins, that's when you can, you know, start to commit, or what I'd call it, to keeping your back-to-back. -back. And also here, Daniel misses a huge spike right after this. Two combo Tetris and then, and then single. Should have gone straight for another Tetris. Just because look at that board on the, on the right. So if, that's, if that sends then that's going to be huge. So what you need to do is send your spike first so that they have to be forced to cancel. I'd, you'd rather not take all of it. If, and even if it risks you and your stack, then it's okay. And also, Daniel, Mr. Fractal. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Daniel, Mr. Fra a Fractal right here. If you want to take some time to figure that out, then go ahead. Otherwise, I'm going to fortress this. Okay, Fortress really is not working today. The garbage is just gone. Okay. I-L-T-Z-O-Z -Z and S. So if you want to take a look, we use this S piece as a prop for our second T-shaped hole. And then we make two T-spins. So if you don't know how to do that, you can watch my... Uh, five mid-game keyspin setups video, which I will probably link in the description if I actually remember it. I probably won't remember. But let's get back to it. But this is just as fine, because, you know, still keeping up that pressure. But now the, re the resources are kind of gone, and we don't have that huge well that we had, like, a moment ago. So now we'll, we'll just build our own. It's fine, guys. We'll just build our own. <laughs> And once again, that fades away too. So, I guess I guess the moral of the story is, make sure you live your board to the fullest. That that was such that was such a wrong take, but yeah, as long as it gets the message across, you're you don't always have to send what's on your board. You can always strive for more. Actually, that that's a better that's a better moral of the story. I, I really like that. And already, Daniel is almost at match point. Well, it is at match point. And I think you already know how this is how this match is gonna end just because Daniel uh won this tourney without any losses. And yeah, as you can see that that really high the risky stack pays off just by giving him another chance to tank and then send it back. 
and I believe sometime before this. Yeah. We we were like this close, and we did not see the teeth in the Tetris. That would have been so much better just for just to place a few more pieces, Z piece, O piece, S piece, and then go for that teaspoon Tetris. That would have been so much more. And then also adding on to this, a Z piece overhang to at least get another teaspoon double. But you know, unfortunately, he does have to skim. But I wouldn't care because this is sitting pretty comfy right now. Because all he needs is one more game to win. And Reku needs like. Can't do math. Five. Sorry. See, the, the stupid dumb flower can't even do. I can't even count to five. Right? So he just keeps, uh, continues to go for that stack, tries to at least find us anything that will kill, but what he's doing right now is not going to work. Like, once again, I've been talking about it for sev for like several minutes before, but yeah, getting uh, skim, those kinds of skims just is not going to kill on its own. You gotta send clean, but of course in some games it will kill, but you know. Most people won't just win with cheese, unless you're, of course, no teaspoons Tetris, which is, I think, I, I it was someone's alt before the alt purgatory, or the purge, the alt purge, the alt purgatory is also fine, but yeah, that was someone's alt, no teaspoons Tetris, but it was a pretty low X rank play, being played by high X rank, so yeah, I guess that still goes to show that. Teaspoons and Tetrises are much more important. And so we have this, uh, this, this makes me really sad just because this is, this was one, uh, one of my, um, well, a, a fan of mine, Plum Cube. He, he tried to do sex spin on stream for the warm up round and, uh, this happened. He got, he got perfect cleared and he stuck, he committed too hard to this SDSD. So I'll just give you advice right now. What you are supposed, what you should be doing in this situation, since you got perfect cleared, is play it safe. So if you want to, uh, uh, why don't I just? Yeah, I can do this. All right. So I'm gonna have the same board, just a bit lower. If you want to abort a teaspoon, all you have to, all you have to do here is just slide this JP in and then put the. L piece in here first. And you probably didn't see this coming, and I'm really sorry for that, but yeah, shut up, Wrench. Uh, Sexpin is a good opener, and fuck you. Anyways, on with, with, uh, with the video. So yeah, uh, the, the point of Sexpin is to be less greedy than be less greedy, unless, of course, you have that opportunity to try and top your opponent out. So here we're moving on to the real game, and I'm cheering for Clum Cube. But as you can see by my disappointment, the disappointment in my face, you can see how this is going. And I am suddenly enlightened again, because instead of going for stick spin, this really surprised me. Uh, Clum Cube went for SDPC, I think. This this was SDPC, right? Unless I'm stupid. I better not be stupid. I, I feel like this, this should be SDPC. So, uh, yeah, thank you for doing that. Uh, stick's been bad, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm right. Politics. But yeah, if you know SDPC at, at an S plus rank, I have to kind of commend you, because, you know, I don't, we don't see a lot of people do that. What we, what we definitely don't want, want to see you do is something like this, where you deliberately create a giant wall between this IP's dependency, and this hole right here. And then you create two IP's dependencies, which really makes me mad. But you, you use Sexpin, so I can't really blame you. But you also failed Sexpin, so should I... Should I, like, at least criticize you for something? I don't, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm really sorry. But I really do like this uh, J spin to try and get an overhang. 
So as you can see, they're kind of planning to already put the J piece in there. So they'll just put the O piece on top and then rotate it, which already sends a pretty huge spike. And then goes for another one. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the with the match right now. And if this was my attorney, I would just end it right there and then give the match. But unfortunately, this is first to seven. How sad. And actually, this is two PCs. And I don't know what setup the Clump Cube is going for later, maybe. One that I already knew. But yeah, like as as far as I'm seeing, most of these um conversions were I guess conversions is a, a weird word. I like to use chess terms a lot. But yeah, the conversion from having a pretty uneven board was pretty good. Like honestly, these are some decisions I thought I I thought I would make. And then going straight into a clean board is also some is also something I'd highly recommend for those users. And I don't know why it infuriates me so much when these kinds of things happen. But I'm really glad that I learned that this is possible. This kind of snappy thing happening with the J piece. I thought it would just stay there and not go back, but you know that you know, a spin out of a, a fishtail. I might have to practice that sometime soon. So thank you, Clump Cube. You've taught me something new, so therefore I can't be mad at you. But you lost the round, so I'm still going to criticize you. And I also really... Sorry, I'm saying I also really like a lot. I love this T-spin vision. Like, seeing that the T... That without this line, the T-piece is open. So they're going to go straight for the T-spin. Like, man, this guy thinks exactly like me, but, like, as an S+. Plus. I don't know, maybe I should, like, have, like, a tribute compilation video, make it, like, 10 minutes long. Just for you, man. We're not besties, though, because cause Feech is my bestie. By the way, we're totally not doing um, a, special, a special collaboration on our birthday. We would, we would never do that. It would, it's totally not this month. Anyways, back on the topic. So Clump Cube is up 2-0, which again makes me happy, but I already know the results of this match, so... Yeah, still kind of saddened. And what also pains me is that um, people at this rank usually don't downstack very fast, so I'm forced to watch them just slowly dig down as slow as possible just to get to the bottom of their wells and this was like 40 seconds and i i couldn't i can't stand stuff like this i don't i don't know why i keep saying i, I either say it's satisfying to watch to watch them go down stack but like when it takes too long it just kills me so then the score kind of breaks even not really but you know what i mean Right? Alright, so now the goal is be for between both players is to try and send as much attack as possible. And I think the problem with uh, Clump Cube is that whenever there's a huge mistake, there is a, there's a really huge mistake. And whenever there's a lot of cheese, there's definitely a lot of cheese. So what you have to do is just prevent these attacks from uh, hindering you as much as possible. And that, and of course by that I mean, when you get when you when you get cheese like if they send you cheese you have to make sure that you're canceling it so that it doesn't get sent to your board. So if you watch my timing video, you should totally watch my timing video if you haven't already done that. Uh, I do list one of the reasons as to why you may or may not want to tank or cancel is cheese, and I never elaborate on it. I'm truly sorry for the people that I have inconvenienced. So just click on this video and then watch like I don't know 55 minutes or something just to learn just to learn of what the when they should be canceling in terms of cheese but I guess I guess the short uh, short um, short thing to say is if you don't like cheese then you just gotta cancel like say whatever you have and be prepared for it because if your cheese goes to the bottom of your board, then that's going to be really bad for you. 
And it's better to just deal with it at the top of your board. Sometimes, at least. Ugh, man. I can't believe it's been almost an hour. We're still on the second match. Are we on the second match or the third match? I, I've lost track of time. But yeah, you know what really makes me happy? This spike right here. Like at the very... Like right here. So to start out with a spike, and to get a huge one, what you need to do is have your well almost open, but you need to have a setup right before it. And so what you could do is abuse the combo system in Tetrio by starting off with a bunch of singles and then going straight into the bigger attacks. You want to have your bigger attacks last and your smaller attacks first. So what um, Clump Cube does here is skims this Z piece then goes for this T piece and does not cover this hole by the way. And then goes for the kind of impractical placement right here. And then the well is open and then you can send that 17 spike. That's like, that already made me just like squeal a little inside. But unfortunately, Guandavji has too much clean garbage and is just able to get out comfortably. So yeah, when you send, like even if you get that huge clean garbage, you still want to be careful that your opponent doesn't just send everything back and that you want to be sure that you're in control of it too. And also this TST was really unfortunate. I really hope that he would put this L piece right here or somewhere else, or maybe even here. I think here was the best option. But instead he put it right here. And the problem with this is of course you can't kick this in when you have only one up. You need to have two up or none in this specific place. So now the T piece won't rotate inside. Just one of the unfortunate rules about SRS. 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 Sorry, my tomfoolery is certainly being done right now. Okay, I need to snap back to reality. So, I haven't look, been looking much at Guanda FG's gameplay, just because there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in Clump Cube's side. Uh, this conversion right here after the failed uh, piece placement right here with the L piece, you know, instead of just trying to build around, instead of just panicking, he decides to try and build around it and get as close as possible without getting without it getting in the way. So if I go back into Fortress. Doo -doo -doo. All right, I'm going to go back into Fortress. So here are a few ideas you could use to help recover from these kinds of mistakes. So what you can do is you can tuck in a piece and fill it in as much as possible. That way, it's less of a problem to you. And that was that teaspoon was just lucky, by the way. <laughs> you could do something like this instead. These are just a few ideas you can use in regular gameplay to help you think of ways to recover from these kinds of bad mess drops where you're like, yes, something like this. And then you can do this instead. This is really cool, by the way. Alright, so if we're gonna let's move on. I am so sorry, there is something that happened. So we're gonna get back straight into it. Straight back into it. Sorry. So I have uh, washed my mouth, so now I feel more ready to talk. And so I kind of saw an interesting tactic at the beginning of this match. So we, I kind, we kind of almost saw Guand FG about to start 3 whiting and just didn't have any pieces to continue the 3 white. So then it kind of became a 7-2 stack, which is really odd because 7-2 stack, of course, isn't the best. But, you know, you can't restart a Tetra League game or, or a Versus game with a tournament that's going on. So, you know, just have to deal with it. And actually here, I really don't like this placement. I feel like there were a few more 
better placements that could have happened. And actually, what I was thinking of is just put the Z piece. I, I'm not going to fortress this, actually. Just put the Z piece like somewhere up here. And that looks stupid, but it does leave open room to put the I piece in for a Tetris. And then you could put the S piece in to simplify the board. So actually, never mind. I will fortress this. So, you know, if I can get this to work. All right, so I have almost replicated the entire board, but you know, I will try to do this to the best of my ability. So the suggestion I was making here is you know, maybe after like this is right here, or even just go straight into this and then continue down stacking, but that won't help. So we can do this skim and then go straight into this Tetris. Now I do have a huge um, wall in the middle of my board, but you know, on the name of down stacking, also because GuanDefG just died right after that, probably just died right after this, that's my guess. So you know, man, I don't have any, I don't have anything better for you. But it's definitely better than what you just did, so... Please, please don't take that personally. And so we kind of see a weird continuation coming from Clump Cube. Now here he can actually use that multiplier, and he actually actually I know I re I remember watching this during the tourney. I think this is when I came back to watch Clump Cube, and this actually uh, won him the the match with that specific spike. And the commentators were shouting multiplier when you know I I guess there was multiplier, but there was no back to back at the very end because there was a small skim in between. And here Guandev G is. Almost just went for what would usually be a Mac TSD into a clean stat, uh, clean stat, uh, sorry, a clean Mac TSD into a perfect clear. And this already puts uh, Clump Cube high on the board, but you know, still able to survive a bit longer. But the biggest mistake at this point was using that eyepiece right there. That cost him the game, and that was why I've been just so disappointed this whole time. Oh, at this whole time. And now there's base. There's basically almost no chance for him coming back from this unless he can win three games in a row. And Clump Cube did, quite didn't know where to put that piece after the GT Cannon. You can see Cab is literally adjusting his volume while this is all happening. But he does manage to find that one spike. Although I really... You know, I don't know why. I, I felt a sense of dread... Once, uh, once his S piece was placed right here, just because I don't feel like there should be another T spin set up here, but would have been better instead is to just put the O piece here instead, put the S piece here, and this would be a much cleaner stack. But now here you don't really have much places to put your pieces. You kind of have to compromise to make that T spin, and he was at high risk of of uh, getting KO'd here. Sorry, that subway's going down. So yeah, this is also a super risky. And he also and this is the the part that killed me. Like, he was this close to winning, and he had such a huge spike coming up. All he had to he was like one piece away from freedom, and that just happened to him. I like my god. My guy. Man, after that, there was basically no redemption. So, yeah, uh, Guan, Guan FG takes that one. And now we're moving on to uh, Daniel versus Fatal65. So, a, bit, a little bit of context before I start talking about the match itself. So, um, Fatal65 got third place in this UC. And while we were, while this whole thing was happening, and it's been about like eight hours, we were all tired. Uh, 
we were so sure that Fatal was cheating somehow because he was playing so good. They're just like, there is no way. So we had to just like analyze every single replay that he had in his stock, and I don't know. We just we just didn't find anything. So, you know, uh, Fatal, if you're watching this, you're insane, dude. You were so good. We literally thought you were cheating or smurfing. So, yeah, I really hope you reach your rank soon. Because I think a uh, match before this, he had some really insane stats. So, yeah, moving into this match itself can be pretty stressful knowing that your opponent is a literal APM god. But, you know, Daniel has been playing consistent this whole game. So it might not even might not even be a sweat. Also, just continuing this aggressive play style of continuously sending as much garbage possible at the point of topping out. At least being able to guarantee that that's that's basically a death sentence. And Cab there actually just um as you can see just doxed himself by revealing his monitor and we should all call the police. And what really bugs me is this part right here. If you want to go ahead and find the T-spin in like two seconds, I'll just show it to you right now. Here it is. This, this isn't something you can find just by like doing TKI. It's pretty easy to find. Of course, if you, if you can't find it, then I'm not going to blame you. I'm trying my hardest not to blabber nonsense, but it's clearly not been working. And then here I was just screaming like, go down. This, this is just like go down all over again. Like, look at this. Literally, he just puts the TPs there and then rotates the wrong way. This is, that's a go down moment, but he, I think he won that. Did he win? Well, I'm about to find out. So yeah, we see this continued stacking, and this is a really risky place to be in. So what he needs to do now, Daniel needed to do now, was find a combo spike, and this is actually the perfect time to spike. What he can do is TP skim, TP skim, ZP skim, and then Tetris. So if you don't see that, then you can just go into Fortress yourself, and you know try to see how that works. And this was a T-spin I really, I don't know, I, did, I didn't connect with it. You know, we didn't feel each other. Usually I, I you know, kind of bond with T-spins, even if I'm not the one doing them. But this one just did not connect with me. I mean, that already was just bad. But you know, my instincts are never wrong. And that PC almost killed... Which also made me, which was very close to making me sad. Like, I don't like to see people get screwed over like that. But, you know, after recovering from a PC with huge free garbage and then winning, that's just the best feeling ever. But, of course, it's not, it's not instant. So, you know, if you want to, if you want to get that amazing feeling of countering PC, by sending it all back, you gotta make sure you map you maximize the amount of garbage you're sending with your board. And we're going back to as you can see six three stacking. And this is once again something I really recommend intermediate players to try out. Just go ahead and six three stack. Try it in like a friendly match with your like friend, I guess. Like well, if you got a sparring partner. Just try 6-3 stacking against them and see how you do. If you're a really good sprinter or some someone like that, then you might find this a little bit useful. Because 6-3 stacking, once again, combines the idea of sending T-spins and going fast enough to send Tetrises. So it can be really useful if you're good at finding T-spins. Because I know there are a lot of people who aren't x rank yet but are really good at finding T-spins. And there's a huge amount of room for Daniel to use that garbage that's just been sent and make it into something really good. 
but you know, I was I was sitting here for some time just thinking, what's what's gonna happen? Like, what what exactly should I be should I be waiting for? And, you know, it's it kind of got me real realizing that you you can never expect what's gonna happen next with mostly Tetrio games. And I don't know, that just that just made me more hype while I was watching the journey. But I wasn't watching it most of the time. Cause, you know, being being me the busy person who was literally trying to get like fifty match reports done in a minute. Man, that process probably even um I think that uh, that process uh gave me carpal tunnel sometime in between and then I don't know, my hand is cramping. So yeah, guys, I I work my ass off to to report matches. Do you feel bad now for some, for participating in UC? Anyways, um, also another thing I'd like to point out is looking for T spins. The simplest way to find a T spin is to look for a T shaped hole and then make an overhang. Like right here, all you had to do was just put the O piece here, then that would be an overhang, and then a T spin into Tetris. Like, come on. Man, that was free. It, 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 once again, it really pains me that these, th these opportunities are missed. But, but you know, I gotta... You gotta move on, because I'm not... Because I'm not these S-plus players, and I'm not playing in UC, so... You know, wh whatever they say goes. Or whatever they do goes. Because of course they want to, they they want to say that they want to win, but whatever they do goes. And so we're kind of brought again at a stalemate. And I like how Daniel's actually trying to look for an attack in between these, in between his down stacking. You know, not just trying to get to the bottom of the board, but also, of course, waiting for that well to open, and then get a good attack. So here, what he's going to do is try and find a combo, or at least a way to, to get to the farther down on as well. And once, and he's going to go ahead and do a T-spin. So that T-spin, I think, there shows that this player is... I'm not, I'm not going to say competent, sorry. That sounds kind of insulting. It, it, it just shows that... I guess compared to a few, um, a lot of the others in S plus at, at the time, uh, Daniel is really consistent at finding a way to to get an attack in, and that's why, of course, he won UC. And now, uh, I think while I was watching this specific portion, I thought he was going to do four, and I'm like, nah, man, don't do it. Then I see him do a three stack, like, oh, psych, let's go. And I think that was the moment I started to... Uh, cheering just a little bit for him. I don't want to be biased because I'm the person that's supposed to be looking at the replays. Well, not supposed to. I had no one permitted me to do this. But, you know, I'm doing it anyways. And also, this stack is super risky just, be just because, you know, there's no eyepieces coming up and there's not a lot of room to make uh, specific down stacks. Now, while it is fine to stack up your well, it's all—it's not really fine if you don't have the proper pieces for it. I'm sorry if I maybe uh, don't uh, talk a lot, or I'm just stuttering a lot. I—I I don't know. Maybe just words are coming out of me. And here we are at match point. You know this. I'm trying not to repeat words. I'm struggling so hard not to repeat. And I'm kind of surprised that Daniel almost gets the sweep at this point. But you know, Fail is not totally out of it. They're going for a DT cannon. And I think uh, this, I think if I, if I ever want to encourage an S plus or someone around the intermediate level to try out 6 3 stocking, I'm going to show them. UC 11. Like, honestly, all you guys need to do is just do 6-3 stacking and you're going to improve. Or at least unless you're, like, a huge plonker. But 6-3 stacking, once again, is... 
really powerful on its own. And you don't need, and you don't even need to be a, a, an opener fanatic just to learn six three stacking. Six three stacking is basically, I guess, a person's response to being an opener main. Then you're just uh, an opener main. But there are such things as an opener mains. People who just don't do openers at all. I don't understand you guys, and I don't know what's wrong with you, but. Like, there's, there's no harm in learning an opener, because you go faster, at least that way, because you know what you're going to place. But yeah, don't take that personally. But I, I really like, I kind of like this bike, because it's going slow, yet it's still canceling garbage as it goes. And both players don't seem too concerned about seeing uh, uh, spikes kind of lined up right in front of each other. Like maybe seeing an 8 spike and then a 7 spike come right after. Those are the kind of things you don't have to worry about at this rank in S+. But of course the players are around SS now that we've allowed uh, rank ups. And Daniel is basically holding on for life. And then a few misdrops show up. Which is why I say again, you don't have to downstack super fast. You can still go slow, because there are plenty of players that can downstack slow and play efficiently. And my man Daniel proving out there that 6 3 Oh my god, he has PC. Well, it goes to show that PC is the superior race. But if you really want to, you can go for a second PC right there. So if you count the pieces, that's 30. So that, that means you're on fourth PC. So at this point, you could try and set, set up a fourth PC. Try something that you might know. But, you know, for... Yeah, if you're ever lost on a PC number, you can always check the amount of pieces you've already placed. And, you know, just divide that by 10. Then... Yeah. Sorry, I'm rubbing my eyes as you cannot tell in the background right now. And I like how I was thinking about doing a T-spin in that, in that specific spot. But Daniel just goes straight to stacking as normal. And it's okay to not trust your uh, instinct on T-spinning. Because not, not everyone might be confident enough to do it. But I believe there was a missed spike here. Go a little bit farther back. Right. So right here, if you just take a little bit longer to look at it, you can actually get a small spike right here by putting the Z piece, then the J piece lies right here, and then you have an open well that you can get a Tetris in. So as I've said numerous times, you don't have to go super fast when you're down stacking, and I'm once again proving why. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna repeat a lot of stuff. In death itself, I just repeated. And there's pretty much no escape from this. So if you're ever in a position where you're, there's absolutely no escape, you can just take, you don't even have to try. You can just slow down and take your time to recollect yourself for the next round while your opponent basically wears themsel themselves off by setting a nonsensical amount of APM when they really shouldn't be. But yeah, if you really need to, take some time to breathe in between rounds. You know, let the let the butt blood flow. Because I really hate for you to be, like, holding your breath while you're playing the game. That would be, like, terrifying. So Daniel's going to take that round. And now we're going to look at the Grand Finals. So this is against uh, DLG Protogen. And Daniel's going to be on the right side. And I think most of you already know how this ends by now, because Daniel hasn't, as I've said before, he's not lost a single one, but we're still going to look at it, because this is a pretty close match. So Daniel's going to stick to it, to his regular guns, just go for 6-3 stacking, and then slowly convert into mid-game. And now DLG Protegent uh, is going for a kind of wide, I guess. And once again, this is Grand Finals, so both players, by the way, have been up for 10 hours, so... 
I really commend them for staying up that long. A lot of people actually left in between. So, you know, these guys, they really want they really wanted to win UC. So absolute respect goes out to them. In fact, there were um the seedings were completely different around this time. Cause a lot of people in higher seeds usually wouldn't get that far. And we had some pretty unexpected seeds get pretty high in the tournament too. But both players just trying to... By the way, both these players are playing almost a 2 PPS, which is around a U rank pace. I don't expect S plus players to be playing a 2 PPS, but you know, when they are, this, this is pretty fast. And actually, what I just realized is that DLG Protogen is also going for this method of, of playing a little bit fast, but also efficient enough. But, you know, still has to convert that stack. Also gets the all clear. Well, almost. It's, it's, I should have called it a color clear, because, you know, at some point when color clears are a thing in the future, you know, people will be able to say, to say that stuff. But I'm the only one that ever points at color clears. So sad. And at this point, you would expect DLG Protogen to at least maintain this lead for a while, like you did Clumsy Cuber, but you're going to see that's not entirely the case. There's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of uh, comebacks in this tourney. So if you want to watch the whole VOD, that's at twitch.tv slash kaboozled. And of course, if it this is past two weeks of the tourney, then you can watch on Itchy Lol's replay. He's going to have the whole VOD downloaded and uploaded onto YouTube so you, everyone can watch. So if you're interested in doing that, then you can just go ahead and check out his channel. And so DLG Protogen is now three up in the grand final. So we're looking towards a bracket reset coming up. Possibly. But once again, Daniel still has to... Of course, pull, pull through at least once to to win this set. And so manages to get an early cheap kill in the start of the round. And best thing for him is he didn't really have to try, so now he still has enough energy to keep up the momentum in win streak. Because I find that usually when uh, you're behind in points and then you win... You're, you're way less likely to win the next round. Just because you, either you might be mentally fatigued from winning the last round. Or just from using all your strength. But it's, it's really a good idea to regain your uh, mental strength once you've won a round. Especially in a game like Tetria where there's absolutely no limits to how fast you can go. Of course, actually the limit being like 30 PPS, but... Is any human really going to reach that fast? So once again, we see DT Cannon versus just regular 6-3 stacking. And I really like what both players are doing. Just being consistent enough to send garbage, which also deals enough APM. And now Daniel is, again, stuck in a position where basically one wrong move, could, uh, one wrong move or slip up could definitely kill. Alright, so when these players are are too busy down stacking or doing something doing something else, like setting up a T spin, that may not even be worth that much. That's usually when the other player has to strike and kill. Or not kill, top out. Because this is a very friendly game. So wholesome. Yeah, there's a lot of people that mess up at some point in the match. And then as soon as that mess up happens, you're basically you're basically dead. So if you don't want that to happen, once again, you gotta play consistent. And I think consistency is also the key to having a consistent Tetra League record. Because sometimes a lot of players will have that, I guess, uh, what should I call it? I guess surgeon surgeon ranks. Well, 
where at some point they'll basically get a ton of TR or a ton of or yeah, just a ton of ranks up. They'll probably even reach a new rank and they're going to be like on the top of the world. And then after that, or just a while, then they drop way below what they what they were previously at. And I think this is a trap that a lot of players fall into. So if you ever get improve a lot in Petra League or something, you should at least be able to check that this improvement is is at least accurate. I know a lot of people, including me, have uh, fallen into this, uh, I, guess, I guess, trap. Because I remember at some point actually being in the top 40. And then after that, I lost about like 100 TR in like three matches in a row. <laughs> yeah, you know, that was devastating. It took me like five months to get all my TR back. But I think at that time, I realized that of course, that wouldn't that wasn't gonna last forever, but you know now I feel much more confident in my skill. And I, and of course, don't let a sudden massive burst of TR and then a sudden decrease uh, let you down. Just because a lot of other people experience it too. Now with these players, they are probably going to in increase rapidly in TR once they start playing Tetra League again. You know, getting to see new people. And now that they're basically confirmed U ranks. Like, I'm pretty sure UC trains people to, like, go up at least three ranks higher than they already are. And so I feel like some of these people might experience that sudden surge in TR and then drop. So, back to the tourney. We're going to see if... We're almost going to see a four-wide here. I have never seen a successful four-wide done by... Uh, someone at this skill level. But, you know, it was just done. Yeah. I think a lot of people take 4-wide for granted in this game because, you know, because, uh, you know, you've, once you say 4-wide is nerfed, that's enough for the community to say that it's good enough and they can go home. But the added... Um, pressure of four wide is making sure that your opponent actually does something or if your opponent is trying to stall then four then four wide is also a good option if they're not very good at setting attack sending an attack to you then four wide is a good option so both players were very tied up and here everyone was just waiting for this whole thing to end and this was about I think it was 10 hours, 36 minutes or something like that. So for me, it was all, it was pretty much almost midnight. So I was just, I was just waiting to go to bed so I could see who the winner was. And I, I just really did not want to be there. But, you know, still happy for these people to have stuck it out this way. But, you know, considering that every match is, you know, two minutes or longer. I, I don't know if these people were enjoying it, too. And they're much more prone to mistakes than before. Just because it's been so long and they should really be getting some shut-eye. And here Daniel was at basically match point. We were all just waiting to see what happened next. And... Usually in UC, you don't see that many uh, bracket resets, or in any tourney, really. You don't see that many bracket resets. Because bracket resets are incredibly hard to get, because if the finalist is already played against the top player, then you can reasonably assume that they're going to lose. But of course, this didn't happen last time with Minaj who literally just swept everybody in the loser's bracket and won the entire tourney. That was crazy. But once we saw this huge spike right here, we had a little bit of hope that maybe we'd see a bracket reset. Because, you know, bracket resets are always, always hype. But Daniel here is still holding out. And another thing you can do just to hold out a, like, a little bit longer is to find these is to find small combos to make sure that your opponent is 
isn't trying to send too much pressure to you. But of course, that doesn't work, and DLG Protogen immediately fires off a huge spike. So the game isn't technically over yet. It's almost over. But it's not technically over yet. And as you can see, um, we're getting kind of a scuffed DT. And this board is really bad, by the way, for both players. Just because... Actually, no, I don't know why it's bad. Why did I say that? Okay, now the board is really bad for a DLG protogen because there's so many sharp edges. So what I would probably do here is try to fill in this hole, these holes on the right. Maybe do something with it to get this T-spin. Because now you're going to be set huge pressure. And this is also a fine, fine piece placement, but this one would probably just ruin the entire... Uh, this probably this one placement right here just ruined the entire set. This missed drop right here. And so a few ways that you can combat this, of course, is to skim a little bit longer. There are a few ways to, there are a few better placements than right here. For example, you could probably skim right here with the L piece. And they could put the these T pieces in this area. And that could probably survive a little bit longer. We don't know how longer, but how much longer, but probably a little bit. But, you know, without further ado, the winner of UC, Daniel35489. I haven't heard of this person until the tourney. And honestly, he's been a really good player. Just because... I say just because a lot. I should, I'm should. i going to change up my worst this time. Due to the fact that this 6-3 stacking thing works really well. Mastering the basics of the of stacking. And then using that in a Tetra League game. Or even just versus the game or a tournament. That that's what he used to his advantage. And a lot of players usually would be able to wouldn't be able to deal with that. Or or this is mostly the difficulty he was having against other opponents was on stream. But off stream, it was it was pretty likely that a lot of his opponents weren't able to deal with this constant APM, because this is around like 60, 70. Right? And with this kind of consistency, you can kind of build build your way up on the APM scale. You know, keep sending more. And practice 6-3 stacking. So, you know, if you're ever looking to improve your APM, or you just want to be consistent, you don't want to misdrop, you can try 6-3 stacking. It's a really good idea to, you know, develop a new strategy in Tetra League. And so, I guess with that, I have really nothing else to say um so thank you uh so much cruise apply for hosting this underdog cup journey it's been really fun i love making these uh rank cap reveal videos for you guys and i'll have another one coming in two months of course and i gotta find out what happens next with bernie and uh i'm gonna come back to uploading new videos hopefully some more tutorials because i know you guys want that and uh, hopefully my public speaking will get better over time. So uh, thank you for watching. Anyway, yeah, big. Wait, big... wait, wait! I got, I got something to say. Yeah. Uh, Colonel Light wanted me to, no, just wanted me to uh, hop into commentary VC so I could say uh, balls. Really, <laughs> really, really, really. Oh, all right, uh... then. Sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to do the